Hey everyone, I wanted to show you how to run your own Resident Evil Outbreak File 1 and 2 local server. First thing you're going to do is download and install VirtualBox. Then download this OVA file, which I've linked in the description. Double click it. And choose the machine base folder where you want your VM to be installed. Go ahead and click import. And it'll take one or two minutes, depending on the speed of your drive. After the import is complete, then you can move or delete the OVA file. Doesn't really matter because your VM will be installed. Now you can go to your PCSX2 folder and open the emulator. We're going to be going under the assumption that you already have your emulator set up to connect to OBSRV, which is the biggest public outbreak server at the moment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then go ahead and look it up and look up tutorials on how to get PCSX2 connected to OBSRV. But anyway, we are going to go to Config, Dev9, Plugin Settings, Enable Ethernet should be checked, go to Options, and take note of your adapter right here. Now we're going to go to our VM, uh, VirtualBox, and we're going to double click on our VM, Outbreak Server. We're going to have this error here, and we're going to click Change Network Settings. Go ahead and change the name to whichever adapter you use for PCSX2. In my case, it's the Realtek PCIe adapter, and attached to should be bridged adapter. Go ahead and click OK. Then our VM is going to run. And the point of the VM is so that we can run Linux, so we can run some bash scripts, which will allow us to kick off our servers for file 1 and file 2. But there's also some additional steps that we need to follow just for the first time. I'm not typing anything here. The VM is going to log into an account by itself. We can get rid of these dialog boxes here. And also back to our emulator, we could just go ahead and close these plugin windows. In fact, we could just close the emulator for now. Now, we are going to do some first time edits here. So let's go to file1config.sh on the desktop, execute in terminal. We're going to do the same for file2config, execute in terminal, and we're going to change GSIP to the VM's local IP. So we're going to open a new tab or a new terminal, and then we're going to enter the command ifconfig. So the way I opened a new tab or terminal is by clicking file here and ifconfig. We're going to scroll up and we're going to look under ETH0. So this is our VM's Ethernet adapter. And we're going to look at the INET value here. And we see it's 10.0.0.177. So we're going to change the GSIP to that. And you might notice, yes, this is localhost, but we still need to change this value or else we're not going to be able to start scenarios. And I found out the hard way with a lot of frustration, so you do not want to skip this step. Go ahead and change it. So 10.0.0.177, right? Yes. Just copy that. Control S to save, or you could do file save, doesn't matter. Go ahead and exit that. I'm going to do the same thing to the other server. Save. Now, let's go ahead and close all the terminals. We want to restart our servers. So, run file1server.sh. Execute in terminal run file to execute in terminal. 
And that's it. From now on, whenever we start our VM, we don't need to do anything. So, we can put this aside, but actually, let's open ifconfig again. Scroll up and get our IP. We want to take note of this, because we are going to modify some plugin INI files. Well, actually, just one. So if we go to PCSX2 and we go to our INI's file folder, let's go to CLR dev 9ini open it in your text editor, and take a look at hosts. Under hosts, there's going to be some config host entries. So the first one is basically just a note. It says set DNS to 192.0.2.1 to use this host list, which basically means if we set our DNS to this value, we will be using these configurations, which is really important. So we don't want to skip this step either. Let's go ahead and scroll all the way down. And under socket connection settings, for DNS1, we're going to set our DNS to that value that was mentioned right here. This is going to apply for all versions of PCS PCSX2. It's always going to be this value, so make sure you do that. 192.0.2.1. This isn't going to change for any setup or computer. It's always going to be that. Now, if we go back up, go ahead and create a config host entry here, or your INI file may have multiple config host entries, but if there is one that has a URL with this particular value, then go ahead and edit that one. Because this URL is going to be used when we try to connect to our local server. So we're going to set the IP to our VM's IP right here. So 10.0.0.177. And that's it for this file, unless you are running PCSX 1.4, which I noticed also required an additional config host entry. So let's go ahead and go to PC PCSX 1.4. I would not recommend running 1.4, but I know a lot of people run it anyways. So uh, I would recommend the latest version of PC PCSX2, like I'm running 1.7, but go to CLR Dev 9, and on 1.4, you're going to have to add another config host entry. You can call the descriptions whatever you want, it doesn't matter, but you're going to set enable to true, and you're going to set IP to whichever IP your VM has, and the URL is going to be this particular URL. So it's just an additional step that you have to do if you're on 1.4. 1.7, your configuration is going to look something like this, except your IP is going to be different based on your VM. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and run our emulator. PCSX2. I'm going to choose an English version, and I'm going to use Turbo to skip a lot of the stuff in the beginning, all the load screens and whatnot. So Turbo is when you press the Tab key, and then it speeds the game up. And if you want to adjust how fast the Tab key speeds the emulator up, go to emulation settings, go to GS, and change the turbo adjust value. I set it to 500, which means that when I press tab, the game will speed up by up to five times. So I'm still in turbo mode. Go to network play, and there's nothing that you need to do to your memory card. Everything that we're doing is all emulation settings. So 
Assuming that your memory card is set up for a generic connection, then you'll be fine here. All right, I forgot to turn off turbo. <laughs> you want to turn off turbo before you connect, otherwise you might have problems. All right, and now we are going to create an account. So let's create username one, password one, and all the credentials will be saved in your VM. So that's pretty cool. Your stats will be saved. The left one says yes. <laughs> so make sure you choose the left one and yeah, let's go ahead and create a game. And there you have it. So, what's the point of all this? Well, if you're running a local server, you will be able to run local sessions of RE Outbreak. And so in my case, I want to have this set up so I can bring it to a convention or I can set it up with friends and run multiple instances of PCSX2 running Outbreak all on one computer. So I could do something like one window on each corner and that way four people can play on one screen and the advantage of running your own server one it's just you don't have to rely on connecting to an external server and two it's going to be faster and three you won't be dealing with these random connection issues that you might have when you're connecting to an external server. Like for example, when I was trying to play with my friends the other week, I was using the OBS RV server in the middle of our game. We got the zombie error. And so there's going to be less chance of that actually happening when you're running your own server and everything is just local. So yeah, it works. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video, but also if you are curious, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like when you have two emulators connecting to your local server. So this is our PCSX 1.7. Let's go ahead and get our 1.4 set up. So 1.4, go ahead and change the IP to our VMs, I might have to set keyboard controls for this one, actually. But I'm going to create a room. And we have our second emulator here. Turn the game down a bit, since it's probably really loud. Sorry about that. I cannot even find my sound controls. <laughs> Let's 
trying to click it and it's just not here. Man, I hate when this happens in Windows. Alright, well, for the sake of time, <laughs> gonna disable sound through the emulator. Pretty drastic, but whatever. And set our controls. All I really need is. the d-pad, so up, down, left, right, we want start, we want cross, and not, we don't really need that, but we need circle and cross for sure. And I think that's really all we need just to get past the menus. So. Yeah, I'm just showing you what it looks like when you have a second instance of the emulator connecting to your local server. And let's go ahead and resume. Right, so we see our game here. And let's start it. So as you can see, moving around, for Kevin and then Mark, yeah, so it works. And so you can run for instances of PCSX2, I've done it before and have a sort of local four player on one screen going on. It's pretty fun, but this is how you do it. Definitely recommend running your own local server just so you know how it's done in case OBSRV ever goes down. And also in my case, if you're running the game with four people, then you don't really have to rely on a external server. You could just run your own and not have to deal with that server potentially crapping out. We'll just be running locally. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show. Feel free to shoot some questions and hopefully you can get it working. So thanks for watching guys. Peace.